Hello. We're looking at how to use console multiphysics to solve problems in acoustics. We've opened up the built-in model that solves for the acoustic modes in a hard-walled room and we've modified it to have the fronts of these loudspeaker blocks acting as sources of sound and we've animated the resulting wave field but because everything is hard-walled all that's happening is that the pressure is going up and down at the points. We can't see any wave motion. So we're going to modify now some of the boundary conditions so that we can, or so that we get a problem where there is some net wave motion. So I've selected the physics tab here and under boundaries, instead of sound hard boundaries, I'd like to have some boundaries where I specify the impedance, that's the ratio of acoustic pressure to normal uh, velocity associated with that. And again, it's asking me for some boundary selection. It's made this impedance node in the physics node in the component part of the tree. And I'm going to be quite extreme. I'm going to make this wall and I'm just going to, I've got some hidden walls, so if I view all my walls for now, I'm going to make and this wall and this wall and the ceiling, I'm going to set the impedance on those. And there's various ways to set it. And the impedance comes preloaded with the density times the speed of sound because that's the characteristic impedance of plane waves in this medium. And if I set it to that, it means that plane waves will actually be completely absorbed. That's not a very realistic model, but it allows, certainly allows us to see some wave motion. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Having changed the conditions, well, first of all, Let's just look at some of these other nodes. Remember, initially we had sound hard boundaries set up, but we've changed the conditions of some of the walls. So if we go back to that node, you'll see that several of these boundaries are now, say, overridden. That's because another physics node has come and set them there. And if we'd open up this tab, it would tell us what's overriding. So the two front speak the speaker fronts have been overridden by our normal velocity node and the walls have been overridden by our impedance node and we can even click on those to show which is which so if we go back to our frequency domain study and run that again and remember we're working at 100 hertz now we see a very different picture um, remember we set this to plot the imaginary part of it just because for the hard world case we didn't see anything before but if we look for the real part as well we see something and clearly there's a lot more sound close to the speakers where we'd expect it by the sound source and the sound decaying away as it propagates I'm just going to switch from the wave light colour map wave to just darken things up so you can see what's happening. So now we can see sound decaying as it radiates away and if we go to our animation and run that there we can definitely see sound radiating away from the loudspeakers. The back wall behind the speakers is still hard and so is the floor, but the three side walls, and I think the ceiling wasn't it, they are all very absorbing. So that's not really how sound travels in a room, the sound field in a typical domestic living room is a lot more modal than that, but it's a good way of visualizing wave motion. So I'm just gonna stop the animation. Now, I've just got a single velocity node 
specifying the pressure for both of these speakers and it's the same value. By the way that 0 0.1 meters a second that's the total velocity there. I could either specify the inward velocity or sorry that's not so relevant there but the actual strength of the sound source has to do with the actual volu volume velocity so that depends on the size of the area that's vibrating as well as the velocity is vibrating with. Is that a particularly high velocity for a sinusoidal variation at 100 Hz? Well we can look at our sound pressure level node here and see that it's actually achieving values of about 115 decibel sound pressure level so that is pretty loud. But my two loudspeakers are vibrating in phase. We get a very different sound field if they were out of phase but I can't do that with this single node. But remember any node with a number after it you can have another one like it. So I could select create another one from the physics tab. What I'm going to do instead is right click on it and select duplicate and because the impedance wall is down here I'm also going to right click on this one and just move it up so I've got my two normal velocity nodes next to each other and for this one I'm going to deselect the right hand speaker by selecting it there and then clicking on this minus so this node is for the left hand speaker and I can even put that in the label and this one is for the right hand speaker so I want to deselect that one have I got the, that the right way around yes left and right so if I leave the left one with a velocity of 0 0.1 meters a second and for the right hand one make that minus 0 0.1 They'll now be vibrating out of phase. I can go to my study node and my frequency domain node and run the study again. And there we see, sure enough, where it's red next to one speaker, it's blue next to the other. If I go to my animation, I can animate any of these plot groups by choosing that one, but the subject we want is that acoustic pressure one node. Sure enough, we see a quiet line down the middle where they exactly cancel out and sound radiating out of phase. So we've modified their sources and as a result we've got a different sound field. If we look at our sound pressure level, we'll still see, we see this line of silence between the two loudspeakers because they're out of phase.